We have climbed the Prague Stolen and Norway. Cruise to Kirkwall in Scotland and walk around the ruins of Black Paddy's Castle. Met the Icelanders in Reykjavik. Did a glacier expedition near Reykjavik and enjoyed the Skogafoss waterfalls. Visited Eiserfjord on the West Fjord region. And were pretty much impressed with the waterfalls of the gods. We left Iceland and plaffed through rough waters towards Svalbard. The island is located 1,200 kilometers south of the North Pole. We steamed through the Greenland Sea, which carries some mighty waves, recording up to 30 meters high. The captain was in a hurry as one of his ship doctors broke a leg and a plane was waiting for him in Svalbard. So he floored the gas pedal and went full throttle. This made us walk like drunken sailors along the ship's deck. Arriving in time to get the kaput doctor onto his plane was priority. Our resulting seasickness was filed away as collateral damage. Halfway between Iceland and the North Pole, we find Svalbard, a mysterious icy land. It is the doorstep to the North Pole, so imagine how close you are. In winter, the aurora boralis can be seen in daytime due to the polar day phenomenon. There isn't much wilderness left in Europe, I think, but Svalbard definitely takes the cake. Tucked away at 77 North in the Arctic, it is a beautifully desolate and inhospitable land with no night in summer and no sun the rest of the year. With a population smaller than a mid-sized university and a real danger of getting eaten by a polar bear, Svalbard is the stuff of literature and legends. It's believed the Vikings were the first to explore this island around 1200 AD. The earth ends here, dropping off into the water over dangerously steep cliffs that make you really appreciate how brave the Vikings were to have sailed out beyond these cliffs. So, how did this cold, remote, ice-covered archipelago come to be inhabited? The secret is coal. The hills around town are rich in coal deposits that have been mined for over a century. Coal is a reminder that Svalbard was not always an Arctic ice world. 360 million years ago, it was actually in the tropics, just north of the equator a swampy area that was covered with the precursors to modern ferns. These ferns were much larger than the ones today, reaching 10 to 30 meters in height. The vegetation was then covered in mud and sand, submerged under the sea. The buried vegetation formed to coal over time. Miners arrived from Russia, North America, Europe and China and mined the coal 
for over 100 years. Up on the side of the mountain is the Svalbard Global Seed Fault. The fault conserves more than 1 million distinct crop samples representing more than 13,000 years of agricultural history, currently under threat from climate change. The average temperature in Svalbard has risen by 4 degrees Celsius since 1971, five times faster than the rest of the planet, making it the fastest warming place in the world. It can be a dangerous life in Svalbard. Anyone who leaves the city limits carries a rifle in case they encounter a polar bear. After all, there are roughly 3,000 polar bears on the archipelago and they easily outnumber the tasty humans. <laughs> 